So that's something I still struggle with. You can do this however you want. Very sought after skill. It's surprising. Professor, but how many professors can you have? Timing then became important because then those opportunities had closed when I'd finished. <laughs> Evolution is essentially a system. You do realize I'm a short person, right? My name is Shesmin Ismail. I'm known as Shesmin Ismail to most people now, but I still publish under my maiden name, Junaida Shesmin Zawahir. I'm known by both names. Um, I did my PhD at the School of Chemistry at Monash University in uh, gas chromatography, hyphenated mass spectrometry and infrared spectroscopy. I now currently work uh, in industry as an application chemist where I work with liquid-liquid extraction, but I also still do quite a bit of work with Monash University where I'm a teaching associate with some of the work integrated learning uh, units as well. So that's, that's, that's me. <laughs> what did you learn from your PhD that prepared you for life after your PhD? Okay, so one of the nicest things I learned about doing a PhD or something when I learned about, when I did my PhD was the fact that um, my PhD was part of a GRIP program or a Graduate Research Industry Partnership program. And as part of that GRIP program, I was exposed to um, uh, to working with industry. I was exposed to how industrial settings work when it came to science, science backgrounds and STEM backgrounds. So that, that was really nice because I, we, we had industry visits, we had people who came in and spoke to us. So that part of um, my PhD was very interesting and because I've now moved on to an R&D role in industry, that background of working with research industry partnership has helped me a lot. What was the most challenging aspect of the PhD? Well, the most challenging aspect of the PhD was doing a, a research-based program which involved instrument configuration and which involved in-depth work with instruments and uh, gas chromatography and very high-end concepts, doing something of that nature with a growing family. So when I started my PhD, my children were very young. That was one of the biggest challenges I had. and it. And, and then challenges added on when, when in 2017 we had this massive school of chemistry flood and I lost around eight months of my research. And then I had to do my final p chapter for my thesis and write my thesis during the pandemic while homeschooling, uh, which was a very new concept to me, while homeschooling, and trying to keep my motivation up. So th that I, I, there were days I had very little motivation because I was exhausted at the end of the day. You've got homeschooling, you're, you're confined to a house. But I was, like I said, I was very lucky. I had a supportive family and supportive husband and, and amazing kids. Uh, and I had a, I had my own little routine where I would uh, differentiate work or PhD life from my uh, family life. I refused to let the PhD control my life. So the PhD was something I, wanted to carry along with me and incorporate into my life rather than have it as something which goes, oh, you're doing a PhD, you should feel guilty having fun on a Saturday night with your friends. You should feel guilty going out on a trip because you've got so much work to do. I, I strongly believed in working smart and productively rather than putting in, you know, a heap of hours just at uni sitting behind a desk or sitting behind an instrument. So I had a, I had a very nice balance of work life and home life. I consider the PhD as a job. The challenging part of having a fa young family and a flood which uh, disturbed your research and a pandemic, I sort of lived with that challenge and you know incorporated it into my PhD. What was missing from your PhD program that would have been helpful in navigating life after the PhD? That open knowledge that once you do a PhD, it does not necessarily mean that you get a good position in academia. So most of us who start a PhD think, okay, my next step is PhD, then postdoc, 
then, you know, end up being a professor. But how many professors can you have in a university? I mean, not every PhD student who enters can end up being a professor, right? So you need to understand that there's life beyond academia alone. I, I, I would have loved to be in academia as well, so that's, um, that's something I would have loved to do as well, but I'm very happy where I am. But there wasn't a point or source of information which told PhD students, look, you could be going into industry, and if you do go into industry, you need to know how to speak scientific language to a non-scientific audience. And that's something which I see is missing in, in our PhD programs. I, I, I love writing. I absolutely loved publishing. And, and that's something I learned in my PhD, to publish quality work. What advice would you give yourself if you were starting a PhD again? But the most important thing I would do if I were to start my PhD again is I would start publishing under my married name. So that's something I still struggle with. I started my research journey with my maiden name, Junaida Shesmin Zavahir. And then I moved to Australia, and then I took on my husband's surname. So I'm known as, which is Ismail, and I'm known as Shesmin Ismail. And everyone knows me as Shesmin Ismail, but I keep publishing as Junaida Shesmin Zavahir. So my advice to anyone who has similar problems is either, it's, you know, it, it might sound very light, but um, there are lots of researchers the world over who have this problem. You change your name and don't realize what an impact it has on your research career. So I wouldn't have changed my name, or I wouldn't have taken on my husband's name, I just kept on with my maiden name so that I would have been known by my maiden name and I would have published under my maiden name. Because the person I am publicly is so totally different to the person who publishes all the work I do. So that's something I definitely would have done. Really? That's it. Thank you, Shesmin. Thank you.